The cold marble floor peers back at you, almost mockingly, giving up none of the secret machinations it has seen in the past few hours. Oh, if only floors could speak! The museum staff have labeled this a Struthiomimus, literally, ostrich mimic. This is a mastodon, one of the early mammals. Technically, the mastodon is not a dinosaur at all, but since they date back to prehistory, they're included in the exhibit. This particular example of the order Proboscidea is the Mammoth Americanus, or North American Mastodon. The chief feature which distinguishes this shaggy beast from the elephant and the woolly mammoth are its molar teeth. This is an Archaeopteryx. Correction. This used to be an Archaeopteryx. Ah, a very nice specimen of Eohippus, somewhat flatter than it appeared in real life. This is an Ariops skull. Such a large capacity mandible and teensy capacity cranium. The male and female Triceratops look every inch the proud parents. A fairly accurate model of Struthiomimus or ostrich mimic. It's a painting of a Spinosaur. The painting is accurate and workmanly with little regard for nuance or emotion. Suspended overhead by thin wires, the pterodactyl frozen in mid-swoop presents a most horrific tableau. A fine painting of a mighty brontosaurus, the thunder lizard. This huge creature with its tiny brain is currently the subject of a controversy. Dr. Earl Douglas from the Carnegie Museum of Natural History believes that current brontosaurus displays have the wrong heads mounted on their skeletons. However, Dr. Oth Neil Marsh, who originally discovered the brontosaurus, believes that the heads on current displays are correct. Only time and more fossil evidence will conclusively prove which of these esteemed gentlemen is correct. A sign on this dinosaur bone display says, please touch. Either these bones feel lonely, or the museum wants you to learn more about the bones by coming into close personal contact with them. You pick it up and place it in your purse. It's a Tyrannosaurus Rex. His name is Rex. Isn't that clever? The sign says, push button to hear Rex speak. Welcome to the Leindecker Museum Dinosaur Display. My name is Rex, and I'd like to tell you about myself. I'm a type of dinosaur known as Tyrannosaurus Rex, which means King of the Tyrant Lizards. Although I was not the largest type of dinosaur, I was the largest predator ever to walk the Earth. 
Some of my friends were 40 feet long and weighed 8 tons, with teeth that were 6 inches long. Your modern elephants don't weigh more than 6 tons. I lived between 250 and 65 million years ago, during a period known as the Age of Dinosaurs, also called the Mesozoic Era. The first complete skeleton of a Tyrannosaurus rex was found just 24 years ago in Montana in 1902. Although there were many meat-eating dinosaurs, I was considered the best killing machine who ever lived. Speaking of which, I'm feeling a bit hungry. Would you like to volunteer to be my next meal? <laughs> a small sign identifies this dinosaur as an iguanodon, which means iguana tooth. However, from the Tyrannosaurus rex's point of view, this dinosaur could be identified as dinner. A rare 17th century English tapestry which tells the story of Teutonic warrior cockroaches that crossed into England from Germany and besieged the castle of Rochford on Essex. Although the cockroaches managed to storm the castle walls after a 90-day siege, the knights of the castle managed to squash the invaders when they reached the castle's inner keep. Since that great battle, the castle of Rochford on Essex has been free of cockroaches. Unfortunately, it has also been free of humans. One year after the great battle, everyone in the castle died of the plague. Shortly afterward, the castle fell into disrepair and sank into the swamp. A house pet, tastefully prepared for battle in 16th century armor. An Italian suit of armor circa 1470. The plates are skillfully modeled. The helmet is of a type known as a salade, introduced in Italy and Germany. The salade helmet was elongated and pointed in the rear, normally worn with a neck and face defense called a mentonnier. The mentonnier's lower section was fastened to the breastplate and protected the neck while the hinged upper part cupped high enough to protect the chin, nose and cheekbones. The suit of armor is empty. A fine example of Maximilian armor, made in Germany in 1505. The steel has a characteristic silvery color. Maximilian armor was first used in Milan, which set the fashion for all Europe in matters of dress and armor. The helmet on this Italian suit of armor, circa 1460, is interesting because it's a barboot, which lacked protection for the lower part of the face. The barboot is sometimes called the barboot salad because, like the 15th century salad, it doesn't enclose the whole head, offering most of its protection to the top. Unlike the barboot, however, the salad is often characterized by a reinforced forehead plate and an elongated pivoted nape defense. It is, however, difficult to differentiate between the barboot, the salad, and the bassinet. The shallow barboot resembles the salette, while the deep barboot resembles the bassinet. Then again, who really cares? A painting of the Black Prince as a Fierce Baby by Ed Botticelli circa 1560. The cheap wood frame is by the Lion Decker Museum circa 1925. An empty chest from the 15th century. Although the carvings on the exterior are crude, 
cut into the wood by someone with little talent or ability for wood carving, the chest now resides in a museum, simply because it's old. Kind of makes you stop and think, doesn't it? Looks aren't everything. This is the life mask exhibit. You haven't seen this many dead-looking expressionless faces since your accounting class at the university. It's an unmarked wood door with faded flecks of white paint on it. It's the traditional sort of hinged transom that can be opened and closed for ventilation. It seems to have a lot of dust on it, as if it hasn't been used in a long time. 